Germans, America, and a government you can trust. It's time for the top 10 crazy theories that turned out to be true. Number 10. Snatch and Grab Enter Operation Paperclip Sounds innocent enough, right? Well, it's not, and it's pretty slick to say the least. When World War II had come to its dramatic finale in 1945, the Allies were deciding what to do with the Axis powers. Italy had switched sides, Japan was being occupied by the US, and Germany was being split in half by two opposing political and economic superpowers, which I'm sure won't cause any issues in the future. But during the occupation of Germany, something strange was happening. Top German scientists and leaders had gone missing? Perhaps they were killed in the confusion of seven different armies showing up to Berlin all at once. Or maybe the American government had something to do with it. Not unaliving the scientists, but rather capturing them and using them for their research. For whatever they can get their hands on, that is. So the theory went. Well, this was actually very true. A great example is a man named Werner von Braun, who if you didn't know was a leading member of NASA, and is a good reason on how American space technology thrived in the 60s. He was one of many that were secretly taken back to the US. And as a side note, the Russians were doing the same thing. Number 9. Say, what's in this drink? Good old prohibition. A very intelligent and moral law that did nothing but cause chaos for everybody, including the government. Probably more issues for them than anyone, really. Of course, telling Americans not to do something means they're probably going to do it anyway. Speakeasies, bar stocking up on booze and still selling it through loopholes, and everyone's favorite Italian gangster Al Capone causing some good old fashioned trouble. The government was doing everything they could to stop people from drinking. Maybe even going as far as to poison a liquor supply. That's not just a silly rumor from someone having Miller time withdrawals. Well, sadly it's true. In an extreme effort to get the American people to stop drinking, alcohol supplies were poisoned with chemicals in an effort to curb that evil hooch drinking. It's estimated over 10,000 people died from the effects of the government poisoning. That's not right. That's not right. You can't do that. Number 8. Phantom Attack Alright, for this one we're taking it back to the 60s, right before American involvement in Vietnam. See, there was this little bug going around called communism, and no matter what America tried to do, one after another countries began to become communists. Something they called the domino effect. Well, it looked like the newest red country of the month was going to be Vietnam. Can't let that happen. So America wanted to send an unfriendly force to inject Vietnam with a little America. Now, this topic really deserves a whole video of its own, but basically on August 2nd, 1964, there was a confrontation between Vietnam and the US in the Gulf of Tonkin. I'm talking about this because it was claimed that it happened again on August 4th, 1964, which now with declassified files is proven to be false. Fabricated by the US so they had a solid reason to put boots on the ground on Vietnam soil. Classic. Number 7. ET Needs a Shovel Video games, you love them, so do I. I didn't get to be 300 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal by exercising every day, baby. And if you haven't noticed, gaming is kind of a big deal nowadays. But back in 1983, it was a different story. For those that remember Atari, you might also remember a little game called E.T., a video game based on the movie about an alien that looks like a melting Easter chocolate. At least that's what I think he looks like. I think he looks stupid. E.T. the game was so bad, it helped create the video game crash of 1983. Atari lost way too much money on the project, so they needed a solution. And as the rumor goes, they took truckloads of unfinished cartridges and buried them out into the New Mexico desert, Heisenberg style. So that's how the tale was spun at least. Sort of creating a buried treasure urban legend for nerds. But in 2014, this wasn't just an urban legend, it was factual. In the speculated burial of over 1 million cartridges, only 1,100 were recovered. This is just one of my favorites. What a wild story. Number 6. Little Green Men Roswell 1947. If you know, you know. But just in case you don't, the theory goes that an alien UFO crash landed in the New Mexico desert, and the US government has been covering up the discovery of the alien tech and perhaps even an alien life itself. New Mexico and the deserts in the US have always had governments around up to no good, specifically Area 51 and, and nuclear testing. So this theory kind of holds water. To cover up said extraterrestrial crashing, the government said it was just some weather balloon that had crashed. No big deal. No aliens here, guys. Nothing to see here. Well, they were wrong. No, sadly, it wasn't aliens, but it wasn't a weather balloon either, but actually a microphone balloon that was designed to listen for sound waves, basically spying on history's second favorite mustache man and to see if he had figured out what was in the nuclear bombs. 
Number five, Big Brother. Remember the 60s, the Beatles, the hair, the beginning of flower power? Righteous, dude. But what if those people who hadn't showered in the park shouting strange anti-government slogans were right? What if the CIA was like testing on people? Like that would just totally not be cool, dude. Well, as it turns out, our van living friends were right. Meet Project MK Ultra, a very illegal and harmful experiment conducted by the CIA. The project was meant to understand the effects of psychedelic drugs and how they could be useful for interrogation. The CIA would torment, manipulate, and a whole list of things YouTube won't let me say, all to understand the effects of a specific rave enhancer. It was administered to test subjects without consent or even them knowing what was happening. Maybe we should start listening to the people with tinfoil on their heads. They might be onto something. Number four, time to save your bacon. Okay, back in the 1960s, Russia was being a little uncool with all their nuclear weapons, and maybe America was also uncool in the same thing. But what perhaps no one in America expected was having a little communist country in their backyard, Cuba. Having been inspired by the same book Lenin was, it started to grow some anti-American ideals. America realizing they can't have that there, that's basically our land, even though it's not, but hey, we don't want to have guys like that in our backyard. That's, that's our backyard. You can't do that. So a plan was hatched to help dethrone Fidel Castro and his evil cigar smoking ways. The CIA banded together an anti-Fidel force and invaded in what became known as the Bay of Pig incident. Trouble is, a last second decision very similar to, Mom, I know it's 7.30 but I have an art project due tomorrow and I need supplies from the store that closes in 20 minutes, President JFK pulled back American air support of the invasion in hopes America's involvement would be easier to cover up. Well, Cuba is still communist, and I'm talking about America's involvement in the invasion on the internet, so you can kind of guess how that went. A conspiracy theory that was proven the second the US planes made it back to the airbase. If we use less planes, maybe they won't know it was us. Well, huh? Where did they come from? Number three, Bavarian jungle. Germany officially surrendered to the Allied armies on May 7th, 1945. World War II was and still is the most costly war in human history. So when things were being sweeped up and some really uncool camps were being found, the horrors of the last six years had come to light. But something wasn't adding up. While most Germans surrendered, some were unaccounted for. Some very high ranking and higher up Germans were seemingly missing. It was thought they had left the country in order to dodge whatever was coming their way. And there were some consequences coming their way. There were networks called rat lines leading to fascist Spain, but later the escaping war criminals needed to de-ass the area, as Europe may not be the safest place for them. So it was off to the only continent that was rather untouched by the war, South America. Not only was the theory of Germans escaping true, but the amount that escaped was surprising. One of the worst to escape capture was Josef Mengele, the angel of death. Not cool. Number two, your side, my side. If you're like me, you come from a blue collar family, hard working men and women just trying to get by. Working nine to five, what a way to make a living. Truck drivers and teamsters being the heart and soul of every country in the modern age. I for one am thankful for your hard work. But back in the 50s and 60s, truck drivers were having a tougher time than they do today. They needed a union, but they also needed a man who was gonna get them what they needed. And that man was James Riddle Hoffa president of the Teamsters and in charge of their funds. Jimmy did help the people in their work and made their lives better, but it was heavily speculated that Jimmy may have had some connections with La Costa Nostra, if you know what I'm saying. Well, they were right. While not a gangster himself, he was heavily tied to mob activity and was a financer in the mob building their casinos in Las Vegas. His mysterious disappearance in the summer of July 1975 may have something to do with that too. Who knows? I don't know. I'm not going to say nothing. Okay, whatever. Forget about it. Forget about it. Number one, sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. Operation Sunshine is the furthest thing from sunshine. This is honestly just complete darkness. Here we go. So in the 1950s, nuclear weapons were all the rage in America. Japan had a different opinion on the matter, but hey. Some scientists who I can only imagine were hunchback mad scientists wanted to examine the effects of isotope SR90 on humans. What else? What did they test on you ask? Soviet spies? Criminals? Oh, just a collection of deceased babies and children. <laughs> what else? I'm going to let that sink in. The government was gathering these samples from grieving families who often weren't told about it. One scientist was quoted as saying, I don't know how to get them, 
but I do say that it is a matter of prime importance to get them, and particularly in the young age group. So, human samples are often of prime importance, and if anybody knows how to do a good job of body snatching, they will be serving their country. That is so messed up, I, they were testing children, body parts with nuclear, that's just, no, that's a, mm, no, that ain't it, chief. That's gonna wrap it up for me today, guys. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe here at Bumblebee, and if you think I'm okay, check out my social link down in the description. Stay sweet, my little honeybees.